This is the second video in this series where we're going to be working with a pool table model. And in the first video we started setting up a side pocket and a corner pocket and developing the first rail. And we're going to carry on with that. The next thing that I figure would be good to do here is to look at the height of this face in comparison with our ball. Because our ball is to scale. So let's go into object mode first and reposition that ball so it's closer to that edge and we can see what's going on. And if we zoom in and compare the center line of the ball and where it bumps into that edge, it's bumping into that edge pretty low. So I'm going to go into edit mode and pull that edge down and I'll be aiming to set it so it's just a little bit high on the ball. So I'll pull that down. There's no specific measure here. It's just a by eye kind of measure. But what I'm watching is the location of the dot for the face. And I'm trying to place it just a little bit above the central point of the ball. Now at this point, we don't really need the ball. We can either move it to another layer or just delete it. And I'm going to delete it. Just get it out of the way. So we'll go back into edit mode with our assembly so far. And go back into vertices mode. If we use control 3, we can see that assembly from a front view. And looking at it from different angles, we'll notice that in the face that forms the bumper, And the way that it's acting against the edges of the bumper or the rail at the side of the pocket here, um, one vertice on each side is acting to somewhat twist this edge. And I kind of think that it's the top vertices on on the corner pocket and on the side pocket it looks to be the bottom vertices that's twisting things out of shape. So what I'm going to do is make another measuring line to straighten those out. And one thing we want to keep in mind is where the pockets do not line up in the square line, the bumpers do. And the edge of this bumper needs to be running along with the axes and not offset and not on an angle to the axes lines. Because the bumpers are what's going to actually make the pool table square on the inside. So that's an important thing in manipulating the angles of the sides of the bumper to make them appropriate. And it's actually the angles on the sides of the bumper that sort of determine how big the hole is when taking a shot from different angles. And that's where the setup in the bumper kind of comes into play. For it to look right, it needs to be set more or less in a pretty accurate place in order for certain shots to become very difficult, like a shot that's running up the rail is a difficult shot. So the bumper needs to be forward enough to make that a difficult shot. So, I determined that the bottom vertices on the side pocket is the one that's twisting this face out of shape. So I'm going to select the top vertices and extrude it, drop it where it's at, and pull it down. Then I'll pick that bottom vertices, use control 3 to look at that on a straighter angle. And I'll simply pull that vertices until it lines up square with that line. <coughs> and then look at how that affects that, that face that forms the side of the, of the rail or bumper. And I think that has a good effect on it. So I'm going to 
Zoom in a little bit closer. Again, use Control 3 to square up my view. Just to see what how accurately I place that lie. And I like to try to get pretty accurate with that stuff, but I'm not really sure how terribly important that is. I'll erase that measuring line and then go over to the corner pocket. And looking at the corner pocket, I believe that the upper vertices could use adjusting on that, so I'll select the lower vertices, extrude it, drop it where it's at, and pull it up. Then select that upper vertices, again use Control 3 to look at it from a square view. And zoom in again to get a fair amount of accuracy, and pull that vertices until it's square. And I think that's about the best location that I'm going to come up with for that. So I'll erase that measuring line and get it out of the way. Now, I'm rather happy with the angles formed by the edges of these um, rails. But further manipulation can be done. For example, um, we could go into phases and if we wanted to change the angle of these, um, if we wish to tighten those spaces in towards the pockets, we could scale it along Y, so just scale along Y, and that way the angle that the face isn't sitting on wouldn't change shape, but we could change the length of it and subsequently the angle of the sides of these rails. or we could also pull them using the manipulator to open one side of that angle and close it on the other side. And lastly, we could also pull that forward to increase or decrease the difficulty level of a shot or the way that the railing is actually sitting there. Me, I'm going to leave it the way that it is because I think it looks reasonable and I'm really not going to try to make a video game out of this. Um, this is just an animation type of, of project where I'm going to try to make a rather realistic looking pool table. So perfection isn't necessary for me and that's really just a couple of methods that, that somebody who is interested in making a video game could use to manipulate that that face in order to to increase the accuracy or or perhaps the playability of such video game if one was of a mind to do that. So I'm going to close up this video and in the next video we're going to start setting up some scale and filling in some in-betweens as well. So that'll be in the next video and until then Happy modeling.